Hello, welcome to our video on the chain rule. The chain rule is going to join our library of rules. We have the sum and difference rule, the product rule, the quotient rule. The chain rule is another one of the general differentiation rules that helps us differentiate combinations of functions. The chain rule is principally for differentiating compositions. The chain rule is used to differentiate functions of the form y equals f of g of x. This is the composition of the function f with g. This is also sometimes written as f circle g of x, as we see here. The circle here, f circle g, means we're composing f with g. That means the function g goes inside the function f, as we've seen over here. We won't see the circle notation very much, but thought we should just make you aware that it is around. You may encounter it in, in some at some times. The chain rule says that such constructions, if y equals f of g of x, then dy dx, or f of g of x prime, is given by f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So what the chain rule is saying is this. We first of all need to identify the two functions f and g in the composition. Let's see how to think about that, how to do that in some of our examples. We have to calculate f prime and g prime and then form the composition of f prime and g. That f prime g composition is seen right here. So this is the function f prime and then with g of x put in in place of the x. Once we form that composition, we multiply that, pro that, uh, by that result by g prime of x. And this gives us the derivative. Our textbook often refers to this as the outside inside rule. In other words, we differentiate the outside function that's f in this case, and evaluate that derivative at the inside function, that's g in this case, then multiply the result by g prime. And again, we can kind of think of this result that way. The f prime is the outer function, and then we compose that with g, so there's f prime of g, and then here's the product, the multiplication by g prime. So let's see how this works with an example. The function h is defined by h of x equals the square root of 2x cubed minus 4x plus 17. Let's find the derivative of h. So we first identify h as a composition of two functions. We can write h as f of g of x, where f of x is the square root of x, and g of x is x cubed minus x plus 17. Now one way to kind of think of the functions involved is this. Let's think about the steps we use to compute h. If we're given an x, so we have an x that's an input, we would first of all calculate g, which is x cubed minus 4x plus 17. So there's the inner function being calculated, the g. And then we put this result into the square root function which is the f in this case. And so the square root here acts as the last function or the outside function and the cubic polynomial as the inside function in this composition. Now to do the chain rule, we have to have the derivatives of these two functions involved in the composition. So f of x is x to the 1 half, its derivative 1 half x to the minus 1 half or 1 over 2 root x calculated in this line, and the g of x is a cubic polynomial. Its derivative looks like 3x squared minus 4. By the chain rule, h prime of x is then going to be f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So over here we've computed f prime of g, first of all. If we look back at the f prime formula here, f prime takes whatever is in parentheses, puts it under the radical, and then makes this construction in the denominator. So when g of x is inside f, we put g of x under the radical, and then put it in the denominator and multiply by 2, and uh, have a numerator of 1. So the f of g of x is the 1 over 2 g of x. And then finally, we're done. Once we replace g by what it should be in terms of the original definitions, uh, the g of x was this cubic, 
So we replace root gx by root of that cubic in the denominator, and we computed g prime earlier, and in terms of the function uh, displayed uh, like this, it's 3x squared minus 4. And so there is our derivative. There are chain rule versions of many of the derivatives of the elementary functions, things we've already seen like the trig functions and the exponential, the power rule, power functions, and also things we'll see in the future, in the next few weeks, uh, inverse trig functions, logarithms, things of that nature. The previous example is an example of the power rule, where the power was the one-half power. The power rule says this, the derivative of u of x to the nth power, or u of x to the nth prime, is given by n u of x to the n minus 1 times u prime. Think of the outside-inside rule. The outside function here is the x to the n, or the u to the n. It's particularly the power function. So its derivative here is where we get the n power, in this case, x or u to the n minus 1. And then we put the function u in for the x. There's the composition. So this is playing the role of the f prime of g of x here. And then finally, here's the derivative of the inside function playing the role of the g prime. So u of x raised to the n is the composition of the power function, f of x equals x to the n, and the function u of x. Again, u of x kind of playing the role of g in our general formula. The power can be read then as first differentiate the power function u of the n. This gives us the n u to the n minus 1. And then multiply that result by the derivative of the inside function u of x. So there's where the u prime product comes in. Other versions are this. The derivative of uh, e to a power u of x is given by e to the u x times u prime of x. In this case, the outer function, or the f, so this is of the form f of g of x, where f of x is the exponential function, that's the outer function, and the g of x is that exponent, u prime. So the exponential is its own derivative, so differentiating the outer function and putting it in the inner function is where the e to the u comes from, and then we have multiplied by the u prime. Likewise, you have sine of u of x, sine is the outside function here, becomes cosine u of x u prime, and the derivative of tangent of u of x. Tangent has derivative of secant squared, so we get secant squared u of x u prime of x, as we see down here. So these are handy rules to keep in mind, because composites, because uh, elements like these and uh, the power, etc. up here show up quite often. And often enough, we're going to want to be able to differentiate them smoothly and quickly. So for our next example, uh, let's consider y given by 3 plus e to the 2x raised to the 15th. Let's find dy dx. We're going to do this using a different way of looking at the chain rule. Uh, we're going to work through what's called the composition chain, which is a very nice way of breaking a function down into elementary functions and kind of guiding you through the derivatives needed. So pause a moment, think about this y. Uh, what are the compositions involved? Uh, particularly if you were given an x, what steps would you go through to compute y, and which of those steps corresponds to a composition? So this is a composition of three simple elementary functions, and we can document, document this composition in the following, we call it a composition chain. So from this top line, it starts with the outer function. The last thing we do if we compute y is raise something to the 15th power. So we're going to say y is u to the 15th. u is that something. Where does the u come from? Well, the u is found by adding 3 to an exponential function. So u is 3 plus e to the w, where again, w is the thing we computed before to put in the exponential function. And the w was given by 2x. Now, if you read this composition chain from the bottom up, it kind of guides you through what you would have to do to compute x if you were, or compute y if you were given a value of x. So if we were given an input x, we'd first compute w equals 2x. That's the bottom line of the composition chain. That w then goes into the line above it. So that gives us what we call u, which is found by doing e to the 3 plus e to the w, 
and then finally that u is put into the top function raised to the 15th power. And so steps 2 and 3 document the compositions. 3 plus e to the w composed with 2x, and then the u to the 15th composed with the 1 plus e to the w expression. We're going to use the Leibniz form for the derivative. Uh, this is the Leibniz chain rule form. You can see this in page 163. And it says the following, that if we have a composition chain and want to compute the derivative of y with respect to x, in a case like this, and we have written this as a composition chain, then the derivative can be found by just differentiating each line of this composition chain. So dy dx, your ultimate goal, is found by differentiating just one after the other down this composition chain. dy du times du dw times dw dx. You can see those can correspond to the three derivatives in our chain. Now the chain has broken this function into very simple pieces, so it's easy to compute each of those derivatives. So for the uh, dy du, we differentiate y equals u to the 15th, getting 15u to the 14th. The derivative of u with respect to w, the derivative of 3 plus e to the w, that just gives us the e to the w back. And then finally, the 2x as derivative 2. And we're essentially done now. All we have to do is change back to the original variable x. We do that by back substituting using our composition chain formulas here to change the u's and w's back into x's. So doing so, uh, we see that wherever we see w, we replace it by 2x. And so that's happened right here. And the u in this u of the 14th was 3 plus e to the w, which came in down here. And again, the w equals 2x. And the 30 comes from 2 times 15. And so here is an expression for the derivative of this uh, original y expression. OK, so last example, let's find dr dt if r is equal to the function t squared minus 3t plus 1 times the expression sine of, here's a composition, 1 plus cosine of 2t. Now again, when you see a problem like this, you want to stop and think about the rules involved. The last thing we do in computing this function is we take a product. We multiply the polynomial by the sine expression. And because that proc's the last thing we do, it means the first thing we do here is apply the product rule. Okay. And so by the product rule, we have the derivative of the first function. So here's the t squared minus 3t plus 1 differentiated times the second. And then the first function times the derivative of the second of that sine expression. So that first derivative is pretty easy, t squared minus 3t plus 1, differentiates to 2t minus 3. And for the derivative of the sine function, so we'll, we'll, we'll put that in in just a moment, I should say. For the derivative of the sine function, or the sine expression, we recognize that as a composition. This is of the form sine of some expression, u of x. The u of x here being the 1 plus cosine 2x. So we're going to apply that chain rule expression for the sine. Sine of u of x differentiated becomes cosine of u of x times u of x prime. So putting those two parts in place, our derivative looks like this. The polynomial derivative, again, was 2t minus 3. Then we just save the sine expression, which multiplies that derivative. Then here's the polynomial, the first function back. And finally, we put in this piece, cosine of u, which and u was 1 plus cosine 2t, and then times the u prime. So we have to multiply by the derivative of 1 plus cosine 2t out here. Now, cosine 2t uh, is another chain rule application. It's the cosine function combined with the 2t. So when we do that derivative, we differentiate the 1, which gives us 0. And to differentiate the cosine, we differentiate the cosine function on the outside, get minus sine. And then that's of 2t. 
and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside, the 2t prime, and that gives us minus 2 sine 2t, and that's going to go into this part up here and gives us our final expression. dr dt looks like this. The only difference between these two lines is that we've made the substitution for that differentiated expression, and then we just did a little arithmetic and algebra to clean up the expression, combine some constants and some minus signs to get our final answer. So a chain rule uh, is not a hard rule to apply, but it takes a lot of practice and focus. Uh, do a lot of practice problems, try not to skip steps, be very careful about thinking about the structure, and writing out the functions involved in the composition. Good luck. Bye.